Okay. Again, and here's another example. Um, this this map is uh, the data from GBIF using a search for Poseidonia. Okay. Poseidonia is a plant, and it's also a um, marine. Um, I think it's a bivalve. Okay. So the same generic name is actually applied in the plant kingdom and in the animal kingdom. One's a terrestrial plant, one's a marine invertebrate. Okay. When we do a search, we get terrestrial plant and marine invertebrate data, okay? Just by searching for that. So we need to make sure that you know when we search for data, especially in a sort of more automatic fashion, we are getting what we ask for. Okay? This is a really obvious example where we've got a name mismatch. But yeah, the, the obvious examples I hope we would pick up on, but we need to keep in mind that um, not, every, not every mistake is this obvious, but these sorts of things can happen. Okay? When you search for a name, we need to make sure that we're fetching the name that we intend. Okay? So look through the taxonomy. Um, here's another example of uh, uh, errors associated with um, GBIF, where a particular species was listed as Lepidoptera rather than it being a plant. Okay? So um, we need to be careful also, um, uh, particularly, particularly um, GBIF because that's like the biggest source for distribution data. Okay, and probably the first place that you're going to look. Okay, um, but we need to be careful how we look for things because the taxonomy on these databases, we we can't guarantee that everything is spot on and accurate. Things are maybe misclassified, put in the wrong groups. Okay, and so here's, so here's an example: there's a part being listed as Lepidoptera. Okay. So if we look for it in one place, it's maybe positioned somewhere else. Okay. Um, so just a summary of uh, problems with distribution data. What is your recommendation when we use find the label, uh, three names, what would be your recommendation? Yeah. Um, so, when we have multiple names on the label, I mean, ideally, we should be using records that we've looked at and we know the identity of them, okay? And ideally, we'd be, you know, we'd have sufficient sound foundation of knowledge in that organism that we can you know, apply the right names to it. But in terms of uh, wanting to find a complete data set, it's often good if you've got a list of synonymy that you look, look for all of those synonyms and then do what you can to understand what the actual specimen is. I mean, there's, there's a really uh, a famous study that I've completely forgotten. Um, that, that tried to look at misidentifications on herbarium records, and it was some ridiculously high number of like 50% of records in that herbarium had misidentified or multiple identifications where it wasn't clear which the real one, which of the real identification is. This this happens. Um, ideally, we would look at all of the records and try to understand what they are. Sometimes that's not possible. If we have, if we can amalgamate them together in terms of we know who the collector is and we have, or we know who the last determination for that record was, and we trust that person's taxonomic integrity, we can maybe use that as a way of saying, okay, I believe these records, these other ones I don't believe quite as much, I'm going to keep an eye on those or look closer into those. Um, but yeah, there's always a problem with identifications, especially when we sort of automate our identifications. Some people get the names wrong. Okay. 
in the experience, what percent of the data general in the, these databases you expect to have these problems? About 20 percent, 10, 15, or? Yeah, I think, I think say, um, maybe 25 to 10 percent. Well, we might, I'm, um, from my experience of all the data that I collect, I would expect at least 10% of that data to be filtered out, maybe as much as 25% to be filtered out from a, just me not being sure about the data quality. But maybe I have a special case because this, the, 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 the things that I do tend to be on like large global scales covering a large area. And in this case, I have to be um, more conservative because I, um, it's difficult for me to know every area very well. And so I use these, these automated procedures to say, okay, if it's in the sea, I'm not going to try to correct it because it's like near the coastline. I'm just going to exclude this. Okay. Okay. And, and another thing. Would you trust the taxonomy better than the other alternative to say this data is true or not? So um, what Depends. we yeah. So um, what I try to do is try to find a recent taxonomy where that includes synonyms, and then check the names against that taxonomy, and if it's something that had that the name is a synonym and not the current accepted name, that would then raise a flag for me about this, this data to say, this obviously hasn't been done recently and they're not following the same synonymy. Okay? At that point, if I, if I trust the original identifications, then I can apply the current taxonomy and synonymize to the current accepted name. Yeah. Um, and we, we, I've done that in the past in a way that I've been happy with. Um, but again, for, for more recently, for the, the coral data that we've been um, doing, we've been trusting certain taxonomists who've done the determinations. And we have the determination record, so we say, we trust that because you know, that was the by Dan Presco, and why, you know, he's very good at this, he's the global expert. I know this is right. Yeah. Okay, uh, so here's just a little example of where, um, depending on what resolution in terms of number of decimal places we get on our coordinates. Okay, here's an example of 17.8 to 21.65. So we've got good coordinate precision here. but. Maybe a different data source will round these numbers to the nearest quarter degree, okay? Or the nearest half degree, or the nearest degree. And depending on how the, the, the number has been rounded, down or up, or we can start here and gradually move out to be inaccurate, or, you know, to be less accurate. So we need to understand our coordinate position, whether we've got truly two decimal places, whether we've got two decimal places that's really just masking quarter degree precision or half degree precision, okay? And how we interpret that will have a big influence about where we spatially position our records. Okay? So there's always this inherent conflict whenever we do, whenever we do modeling that we want as much data as possible, but we want this to be accurate, precise, and correct. <coughs> and by just throwing as much data in as possible, we increase the chance of getting incorrect, imprecise data. Okay. Um, it is important to try to get as much even geographic coverage as possible. So we start by, we fetch lots of easy records. We go to GBIF, we download that data, okay? And that shows where we've got gaps. I would then focus my efforts in terms of literature searches 
uh, you know, and other sort of catalog searches on the areas that I know I haven't covered so far. Okay? It's important to try and get even geographic coverage. But there's always this conflict of we want more data, but we want good data. So collect a lot, filter it. Uh, this is just a reference to this study. Um, and that's the end of my um, data quality talk.